Failure is something that we must all live with in life. It of course happens from time to time and the way we deal with it defines you as a person. Well, with that in mind, the Flat Earthers must be superhuman the amount of failure they've had to put up with. Welcome to the Flat Earth Fail Compilation 46. Welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Now, before we begin today, I just want to nudge you in the direction of my other channel, Run Man Dan. Now, recently I ran in a 50 mile ultra marathon on the South Downs here in Southern England. The video is up on Run Man Dan. It was brutal. I've got loads more adventures coming up soon, including a race on Snowdon and one in the Austrian Alps. So to keep abreast of all those, then please do go check out Run Man Dan, go and subscribe, I'll leave a link in the description. So yes, we are once again gonna take a look at the Flat Earthers failing miserably in another compilation. This is episode 46, only another four to go until we hit episode 50. And we start this month's fail compilation with a video from the one, the only, Mr. Flat Earth himself, CC Chris from New York, Westchester County. Good morning, good evening, uh, good afternoon, wherever you may be. Uh, CC here, Chris, from New York, uh, Westchester County. Uh, it's uh, 423, 2023. Another interesting date for us. I'm going to make this short and sweet. Do you see this? Yes, it's a globe, a physical representation of the world we live on. Yeah. This is a, a toy. Some globes are toys, yes, as a way to engage learning. So what? <clears throat> a globe. A representation of what we live on that you, or, well, all of us, thought we lived on. Now, take a look at this. This is water. Water seeks its own level. Hey Chris, 2017 called, it wants its flat earth argument back. Honestly, they still try with this one. Do you see the problem here? No, I don't. Why don't you enlighten us, Chris? Do you see the problem here with this fake representation of nonsense? How is the water seeking its own level here? Ah, you see, well, gravity keeps everything on the Earth, and there is an intrinsic down in the direction towards the centre of our planet. Of what? Gravity? <laughs> How? Water seeks its own level. I think if you're subbing, I think if you're viewing my videos, and let me be a part of your life. Well, let's just look at this for a second, shall we? The Earth has a circumference of around 40,000 kilometers, and that glass that you're holding has a diameter of around, let's say, six centimeters. So the diameter of that glass you're holding is around 1 666 millionth of the circumference of the Earth. Oh dear, that one's not gonna go down well, is it? But anyway, Chris, you tell me how you'd expect to see a curve in the water of that glass when it only represents 0.0000015% of the Earth's curvature. You can't. It's the same reason why water looks flat in a puddle, in a bath, and even a pond. Dear, oh dear, Chris, what a fail. Let's move on to another Flat Earth legend, Level Earth Observer, who thinks that Nikon have spotted something regarding NASA. Strange. Let's take a look. I thought space was full of junk and that spacesuits were expensive. Look. Cue the moody space music here to get you to believe in this silliness. But let's just think about this for a minute. Like I say, there's supposedly a space junk problem. And of course, this Tosh is funded by the public. 
So they're showing you that they're throwing millions of pounds worth of kit away here. Now, this was an idea by a Russian science team on board the ISS, who took an old Russian spacesuit that was about to be chucked away because it had been worn too much. And they stuffed it full of junk and turned it into a radio satellite orbiting Earth. They didn't just get a brand new spacesuit and chuck it out the door of the ISS for a PR stunt. And contribute to the junk problem which costs millions of pounds of taxpayers money anyway. And I believe supposedly this was fitted with a ham radio, which of course all radio communications work fine on a level Earth anyway. Then you'll know that it's not space junk if it's actually used for something. So it's just another publicity stunt, a very expensive one. Of course, it comes out of the pocket of the American public yet again to sell this silly lie. Yeah. Go ahead. A scene reminiscent of science fiction movies that have depicted... <laughs> Every single clip that comes from NASA <laughs> is science fiction. <laughs> Stranded astronauts floating away from their spacecraft... Uh, SuitSat begins its journey filled with ham radio equipment to transmit messages and slow scan digital TV pictures to ham enthusiasts and students around the world. I think it's a brilliant use for it. What a wonderful way to connect with us normal folk down here on Earth. Now if this toss was real, rather than throw a super expensive spacesuit and contribute towards the space junk problem with that super expensive spacesuit, you would have thrown hundreds of cameras filming continuously until they died during their orbit fitted with ham radios. That would have been a far less expensive, far more fun way of spending the public's money. But of course, that would have been difficult to fake. Well, this was 2004. This was the best GoPro that they had back then. This is easier to fake. How much are these spacesuits? Bear with me. On average, a spacesuit can cost around $12 million. $12 million! Think of the amount of cameras you could have got for that. Admittedly, this figure is sort of more modern day, and I believe the charade we looked at just now is from about 15, 16 years ago, so they're obviously inflation. But this is irrelevant. If it was worn out and no longer useful, then why not reuse it and recycle it for something useful like this? Your argument about how much they cost here is irrelevant. But there's still a lot of money, and you could have still got hundreds of cameras, which would have been far more superior and far more scientific and for a far more fun way of spending the general public's money and far more scientific. But of course, they didn't do that because it was far more, far harder to fake. In what world would NASA think it's okay to chuck a bunch of cameras out into orbit when they've already got plenty out there? The Epic camera on Discover, for example. But you don't believe this to be real, do you? So your argument to put cameras up there is again useless. Let's move on to our third fail uh, in today's compilation. And this time it comes from DITRH channel owner David Weiss and he's talking Antarctica. Here's Google Earth. Anybody can do this themselves. Go on your browser, go to Google Earth and get out the measuring tool and let's measure the United States. So you draw some lines around the United States and it shows you, bam, that's the uh, square miles. Very good, All right? Cool, pretty good. Let's try something in the South. We'll go to Australia, draw a line around Australia and um, it'll give us the square miles of Australia. You know, if we believe it or not, it's not the issue. And now let's go to Antarctica. Have you guys seen this? No, I haven't seen this. Does yeah, and you could do this on, and uh, you have to go to the web version of Google Earth, right? And you click it, and what's that? Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hmm. What is that? That is a desperate man trying to convince people that the Earth is flat. Now, it's obvious here that Dave is trying to say that because the web version of Google Earth won't wrap all the way around Antarctica, it means that it's not a proper continent. And of course, that lends weight to his argument that it's a wall and not a continent. Now, what part of flat Earth in his flat Earth model is almost identical to the globe Earth? 
the North Pole. And guess what, Dave? The web version of Google Earth does the exact same thing around the North Pole. So what we're talking about here is a limitation, aren't we, on the web version of Google Earth? Because it happens at both poles. And by the way, if you use the proper Google Earth, then you'll see that it works fine and it does wrap around Antarctica. Just saying. So after that calamitous fail, we move on to our final fail today, which comes from Mark Sargent, who's being interviewed about questions regarding Flat Earth. Now, if you want to see total failure, then don't miss this one. Here's a question I've never heard, heard asked a Flat Earther, and it doesn't really matter, but I'm interested. What do you think the Southern Lights are? The, the Great Northern Lights and the Great Southern Lights? What do you reckon they are? Any, any ideas? Oh, just a light show. No different Marialis. than... Yeah, just, just part of the... It's just an interesting part of the sky. It's just decoration. Really? So do you think that they are actively like is there an, like a light switch on off button that some entity is putting on a show for us or sure. are they a natural a natural uh, a natural outcome no i don't i I'll, I'll take it what's the line for mission impossible no it's way worse than you think i don't think anything's natural anything at all i think literally every part of our lives is a con part of a controlled system so mark does actually think then that the northern and southern lights are just a light show that are turned on and off for the switch totally ignoring the fact that depending on the level of solar activity you can see the northern lights more at a more southern latitude uh, in the north and the southern lights at a more northerly attitude in the south there is a direct correlation between the solar activity and how easy it is to view them okay um so the the one of the most common um statements by flat earthers to to uh, back up the flat earth is that yeah. a water always finds its level yes i'm wondering why forget on the other side of the world yeah but within the same ecosystem where i am in dunedin my high tide will be at a different time from 100 kilometers up the coast um, which will be different from a high tide, the, the time high tide is going to happen, another yeah. 100 kilometers on, which will be different. Let's say uh, Sydney's on one coast. On the other coast is the west coast of, uh, let's say uh, for, for New Zealand is Taranaki. Um, they are on opposing sides of the same body of water. Right, right, Why right. are their tides different? If it was, if I was to understand this idea of the pizza, yeah. if I tip water into the pizza, it's all going to level, it's all going to be the same level. Why? are tides different at different places if water finds its level then surely all the water on this flat plane should always be at the same level an excellent point that we've brought up on this channel before and it's usually hand wave dismissed this one let's see what mark says you know out of all the questions i've gotten i have never gotten that one the way it was it's yeah. seriously that that as the i have never gotten that question in five years um, because the way you phrased it, I mean, some people have said, you know, they, they've questioned the tide system. Um, so why do we even have tides at all, for example? Um, so he's going to answer a different question then. Amazing. The underwater, okay. The water that's on the, whether it's a ball or a pizza, uh, the water is sloshing around mostly because of thermal issues. I mean, the underwater conveyor system, which is massive and transfers ungodly amounts of energy from, from one place to the other. Combine that with, I don't know, the molecular magnetism you know, that you want to call as gravity and just create some sloshing. It's, it's not, it doesn't, if it was dead still, we'd be in real trouble. Let's put it that way. You can't have a, a dead still uh, system. What on earth was that? Did you notice that little, oh, I don't know, in there? I don't know. No, Mark, you don't know. Total nonsense. Why are the tides so regular and predictable if it really is just sloshing around due to thermal issues? And does, that, still... does that really answer my question, though? I mean, let's use Sydney and Taranaki because they're on a, a, a long way apart, but on opposing sides of the same body of water. Right. No, no, I know. I know you're, you're saying why, why is the water... The level, the, if the water finds its level, the yeah. water should be at the same level at Sydney as it is at uh, New Plymouth, okay. which is the city. All right. I the the short answer for that is that still water finds its level if you take a bathtub and you fill it up with water and every two minutes you run your hand back and forth underneath it that water is never going to flatten out well then you can't ever use that argument that water finds its own level ever again you've just admitted that the ocean is not still and you then said that only still water finds its level so therefore you can't use that argument to claim that the earth is flat there we go everyone flat earth's biggest proponent failing 
miserably. He has basically just debunked the entire water finds its own level argument. Nice one, Mark. Well, there we go. What a phenomenal selection of fails that really was. But for now, we are all done and dusted for another Flat Earth Friday. Thank you so much for watching. It truly is appreciated. Now, if you enjoyed this Flat Earth uh, fail compilation in particular, there is a whole playlist with the other 45 episodes on on the channel. If you want to watch them, go check them out. I still maintain that number one and two are my favourite. Please do have a look at them if you like them. And obviously, if you like this particular video, hit that like button. I've been Simon and Dan. Have yourselves a great weekend. And I'll see you all on Tuesday for one of the biggest explanations of conspiracy theories I've ever seen. See you then.